What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Happy Tuesday to you. Thanks for stopping by. Glad you're part of the live stream. When you hit the live stream, go ahead and just say hello in the chat. Let me know, you, let me know you're there. Give everyone just a couple seconds here to jump in. All right, so we had a historic down day. Actually, a historic pair of down days. Um, the largest two-day slide in the Dow Jones in history, which is notable. That's something to talk about. So I want to go ahead and just kind of dive into things and uh, maybe start off by just taking a look at uh, the Dow Jones. Akash Chopra, hello. Welcome to the live stream. Glad you're here. We're just going to talk about this historic two-day down move in the markets, is specifically in the Dow Jones, and um, two back-to-back thousand-point days basically is what we're looking at. And uh, oh my goodness, here we are. And what's crazy about this is this is where we start to get into sort of the fine details of have you been doing things right along the, the way? You know, during this move from here to here, were you doing things correctly? Were you staying mechanical and only entering trades when you're getting good pullbacks? Were you selling premium and reducing cost basis and um, having a little bit of a short hedge in place? However you accomplish that, whether that's in um, selling calls, call spreads, um, or covered calls, what's your, what's your downside protection sort of in case we do get a down move? Are you being active and consistent? Are you staying small in your positions? Are you not getting too big in any one name, keeping things flat so that when we do get big down moves, you don't have something that's making you very uneasy or, or very nervous? You, you know, you need to be able to sleep at night. So are you keeping your position small enough that you can, you can still function and not be afraid to trade because this is the time to trade. And the reason it is, I'm going to show you right here. We're going to look at the VIX, Volatility Index, Chicago Board Options Exchange. This is the volatility, and I'm actually going to zoom out just a tiny bit. Look at this, Akash. This is crazy. Volatility was up near the 30 handle, and if you scan back, the last time we did that was around Christmas time of 2018 when we had that big market sell-off. So it's massive, a massive peak in volatility. Now this VIX, CBOE market volatility chart, the VIX is just, it's a measurement of fear in the markets and what you're seeing is big time fear. The coronavirus is partly to blame for this. You know, I th I'm seeing a lot of different opinions on, on what's causing this, but ultimately there's some activity that caused some worry and then some big, big, big whales started selling and that caused people to pile in and now we're selling and um, things that were very, very overbought are now having big pullbacks. For example, Apple and now what, what you're seeing overall is just two big massive down days. So if we go back to the Dow Jones real quick, the DJI here, you can see just massive, massive sell-off, and uh, the gap down was most of the move yesterday, but then today was just a straight, light, baby pop-up, and then we just dumped, and just continued all day. Now, the one thing that is interesting is that we are coming down and touching this 200-day simple moving average, so that seems to ride and kind of guide the markets at times. You know, there's a lot of touches along that 200-day simple moving average. So, you know, we could obviously go below, but, you know, if we do get a correction, you know, it may be here because of this 200-day simple moving average. Now, back in uh, 2018, around Christmas time, we did get that slip down, and then we regained it. And so we've kind of been treading above it all along, and if you scroll back, you can see... Um, that 200 simple moving average just kind of guides things along the way. So, and that seems to be the case also with uh, forward slash ES, the E mini S and P's, S and P 500. You can see kind of the same thing. You know, you got the 200 day simple moving average, 
and it kind of guides. It gets a lot of touches. We had our slip around 2018, and then we regained it. But you can see here, we're getting the, uh, the big little baby green right now. Um, the E-mini S&Ps open up in the evening uh, for the futures market, and it's actually green a little bit, so that's kind of interesting. Um, Akash, let's see, what about effects of the nearly 10 year long Fed repo? Do you think that's playing a role? Also, if some new or hidden news about the virus is released, do you think the markets will sell off as hard? Boy, it's, it's tough to say, Akash, I don't think anybody knows what's going to happen. All of these things could be playing a role. Um, I think it's a mixture of a lot of different things, and also with markets being this high, you know, when you get big you get you can get a pretty big sell off and it's a lesser percentage than it had been historically so the numbers it, it's just been very interesting to hear percentages and talk and and then the fear numbers it's just i think there's so much going on um i don't think i could give you a specific reason and and i don't know if it really matters i think um nobody knows what's going to happen nobody knows if this is it and now we're going to continue on um maybe we get a little bump and then we go a little bit lower but all we do know is what has happened, and right now, all we know is that in the Dow Jones, we've had the, the biggest two-day slide in the history of the stock market. Let's see, as they have been, or do you think the big sell-off was because of how overbought the indexes were? Well, I think, you know, I think that the, the magnitude of the sell-off could be due to how high, how overbought things were, Akash, uh, but as far as the reason why, I you know, we don't really know. It, it the, the, obviously, the coronavirus is playing a big role. All the things you mentioned are playing big roles. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, and I'd be uh, misleading you if I tried to guess and say, yes, we're going to go lower, or no, we're going to go higher, because we just don't know. All we can do is stay mechanical, stay small, manage our positions, and, um, and just not stray from what we do. Satish, how are you? I'm glad you're here. So let's look at uh, let's look at the spy from today. Hey Joshua Jackson, welcome to the live stream. Let's see, you said uh, on Thursday or Friday you bought calls on SPXS went very well. Closed out late today. Calls are a seven cost of puss. Very nice, very nice. Oh, you're welcome, Akash. No problem at all. Yeah, Josh, we'll have to see what happens. This is two big days. This is, uh, you know, basically getting almost our 10% move out of the way. So I wanted to speak a little bit about and speak to the importance of staying mechanical and doing the things that we do, meaning not buying or chasing things when they're overbought and looking for things that are on pullbacks and good deals, things that are discounts because for me, in my positions, you know, of course, all the stock I own went down. Obviously, everything is down. So you can't avoid that. But because I've been selling premium in my covered calls and because I've been selling puts first where I don't actually have long stock and um, manage those trades to try to get them ex to expire worthless, it's been a pretty successful venture so far because we've had two, the, two, the biggest two-day slide in the Dow's history and I've been able to weather this storm pretty good because I had pretty good margin, pretty good um, sort of a buffer zone of, of selling premium and lowering that cost basis so that when you get a dump, you don't get too crazy or too worried about it. You can kind of settle in and, and be okay with a few big down moves. Um, now, if these keep happening, obviously the pain is going to continue to get worse and worse for uh, traders. But if we get two big down moves and then we soften a little and we kind of hang, you know, then then things are are looking okay, but uh, two big violent down days. It's um it's definitely crazy. But what this has done is created a ton of opportunity for selling options premium, meaning selling covered calls, selling naked puts, selling put spreads, um, anything that you want to do, selling call spreads, whatever you're into. This is the time because volatility is um, the highest it's been in a couple of years. Hey, net compound. Hey, you're late to the party. Hey, you're you're never late to the party. You can show up anytime. And so glad you subscribed, net compound. Thank you so much. If you want to join our Facebook group, click the icon on the uh, YouTube channel banner. Come over there and send me a request, and I'll get you into our private Facebook group. We've got like seventy some people. Seventy some people. Blackhawk driver. Glad you're here. 
You've been buying AMD over the last few days in order to set up for being able to make some covered calls. Perfect. Blackhawk Driver, do you have 100 shares? Have you amassed 100 shares? Satish, is that a joke? <laughs> I hope that's a joke. Tim H had a massive run on DGAS over the weekend. Congrats. UB has been going up while the market is rising, and it's been going up when the market has been falling. It's kind of confusing how it just doesn't want to go down for anything. So Blackhawk Driver, 25 short now. What do you mean? Do you own 25 shares? Are you, are you, you said you were buying AMD. I actually put an, uh, a position on an AMD today. Let's look at AMD and I'll talk about what I did. So AMD, when you see, you know, I've kind of tracked this. I've traded AMD a few times in the past few months. Um, you own 75 Blackhawk? Okay, great. So once you get to 100, yes, you'll be able to start putting on those covered calls. So what I'm doing right now is I got the push up to 59.27 in AMD and Blackhawk Driver. This is what I, what I did recently. Then we got the two big down days and then the massive gap down and it kind of hung right there. You can see that baby green day yesterday. It tried to fight it and tried to gap up but then got kind of crushed again today. And I feel like with this much of a move from here, like – from its highs, it's already down about 19, almost 20%. So I took that as a, an opportunity to maybe look at selling a put. So I took AMD. I saw that we we're getting the MACD coming down. I saw that we had the RSI down around 40. So I thought, okay, let's go ahead and take a look and let's see what the implied volatility is. And right now, it's 71%, but the current IV percentile is 100 which means it's at it's as high or higher than it's ever been in the past 12 months, ever been, than it's been in the past 12 months. And so that creates an optimal situation for selling some premium. So I went out, as you can see right here, went April 3rd, 2020, 38 days out. I cracked that open. And you can see I went ahead and I sold one 45 strike April 3rd expiration put, naked put, and I sold it for $3.20, I believe it was, and, and and now I just sit tight, we'll sit tight and see what happens, but um, right now I'm pretty excited about it, uh, $3.20, I sold it earlier today, so it takes my break even to um, $42.80, I believe, and now we're going to kind of sit and wait 38 days, and we'll manage that position as we go. But it's just been a nice enough pullback that um, that I think you know putting in that naked put at 45 could be a good opportunity, especially after 2,000 point down days in the Dow, um, two huge down days in the, in the uh, S&P 500, the E-mini S&Ps, just a big down day. So I took that as opportunity. I sold a put on AMD. We're gonna sit tight and see what happens. Christian Patag. Patagalan, good afternoon to you. So glad you're here. Yeah, and I and I apologize, Akash Chopra. Not all time highs, but 100% just means of IV rank means the highest it's been in the past 12 months. Because if I come back to this trade window, this IV percentile is implied volatility its rank against itself. So 71.17% right here, Akash. What this means is if this I percentile, current IV percentile is 100, that means that over the past 12 months that AMD was never at 71 or was right at 71% as its highest it went. So the highest it's been in the last 12 months is 100% rank, which is this number. So the fact that it's 100 is amazing. So if you sell premium now and get a huge amount, like I just got $3.20 on that contract, then if volatility drops, you're going to get a volatility contraction. That's going to crush volatility maybe from 100 down to 50, and then it's going to make all the premium much, much smaller. 
So that means that that, that option that I sold for $3.20, I might be able to buy that back for a dollar. Yes, Blackhawk Driver, that's great. Also, you're accumulating some MU. Awesome. Just be careful not to get too heavy into, you know, don't, you, you know, you don't want to go all in on the chip makers. You know, make sure you're, you're diversifying a little bit. Let's see, Joshua, if IV falls, how does that affect the Greeks? Lower delta. Um, the delta is, is, well, let's see. Let's open up and we'll give you an example here. So for the delta, so the delta over here, the delta is affected. It's just the amount that the option prices are going to move with a $1 move in the underlying. So yes, I believe that will be affected um, relative to IV contraction. If it falls, it will change the pricing uh, structure of the options, I believe. <clears throat> Satish, no, no problem at all. You also bought Ford and XOM Blackhawk. Okay, be careful with Ford. That's a tough, that's not a great one for options. Um, I have Ford shares from years ago and I've tried trading them and it's kind of a nightmare at times. There's just not a lot of premium ever. Um, so if IV drops, even if the price stays the same, you make money. Akash Chopra, I want to point this out to everybody. Look at Akash's comment. He said, if so, if IV drops, even if the price stays the same, you make money. That is a 100% correct statement. Yes, if you sell premium, say a stock's at $50, you sell a put, IV is 100, and then the next day, the stock is still at 50, but IV's at 50, you just made money. The stock doesn't have to do anything. This is all about volatility. Price helps with regards to your expiration because you're either because you have a strike price, you have to either be above it or below it, and that can dictate on whether or not you can be put the shares or if you can have shares called from you. But ultimately, with, with implied volatility and volatility rank, yes, if volatility shrinks and the stock does nothing, you make money because you sold the premium for, say, like look right here. You can see my cursor, $3.15 right here. Say you sold this 49 call. Here's the 49. You sold this 49 call for $3.15. IV is 100% and then high IV goes to 40%. This same 49 strike, in order to buy it back to close it, it might be worth $1.50 now. So you sold it high. You bought it back low and you keep the in-between. That's the whole game. That's the whole thing. So glad so many people are in the chat. This is great. We got 17 people going. Whoever else is in the live stream that hasn't said hello, jump in the chat. Just say hi. Tell me where you're from. Love to hear from you. All right. We're going back. We're going to go look at, um, I want to show you some craziness. MDB. You remember not too long ago, I was telling you guys how this is my bread and butter. This stock was overperforming, way overbought, way up in the uh, low 180s. Now it's at 149. But here's the exact reason why it's so important to sell premium and to lower your cost basis if you're trading options because we just had one, two, three, four massive, massive moves to the downside. And if you look at my chart, what do I have marked off over here? $98.99 break even. So even though we had two of the biggest days down the market's ever seen, my cushion is still in place. Yes, this, this sucks. I don't want MDB to drop. I want MDB to go up because I own shares. But because it's dropping, I can't do anything about that. All I can do is be careful and say, okay, have I been doing things right in the past? Obviously, I think I have because I've got such a good cushion. Now, the cushion can be blown out. We could have 10 more big down days and that would blow up this whole thing and it would be really painful. But for the, for the time being, I've been able to absorb these two big down days or four big down days. Yaniv Burke, hello, long time follower, awesome. 
You've been a passive listener. I I'm so glad that's totally okay. I'm glad you popped in the chat just to say hello. Um, I don't want to draw attention to you if you don't like it. That's totally cool. But want to thank you for being in the live stream. And if you're uh, not part of the uh, Facebook group, click the link in the banner of the YouTube channel. Come over and, and join the Facebook group. Glad you're here. Let's see. Yeah, Joshua, that's great. Anytime you can get, yeah. I mean, what's great about drops in the market like this is you, if you have a shopping list of stocks that you like, everything's on sale. It's time to go shopping. These are the opportunities that create big gains down the road because we gotta be uh, we gotta be aware of what's dropping. So I have a list of things I'm watching um, and and keeping an eye on. I'm trying to think if there's something else I can show you guys from my portfolio. So I think I told you I put on the trade. Oh, I put on the revolve trade. You guys remembered that, and um, I got great premium on it. They missed, well, they beat earnings but had a bad, they missed revenue. The outlook wasn't as good because of the coronavirus. So it did drop into the mid-15s, almost 16. So I'll be massaging that one a little bit. Um, I've got a couple, two contracts on, one at $22.50 and one at $20. $20. They're both naked puts. Got really big premium on them. So I'm going to wait and see what happens with those. And um, I see those as being very valuable for selling premium in the near term. So we'll see where those go. And I'll keep you updated on how, on how they're going. Let's see. I actually didn't know that Facebook group thanks for the shout out. Hey, anytime, Yanev Burke. Krish Patel. What's up, Krish Patel? So glad you're here. Satish, let's see. I'm sure since the Dow took 200, sport will move up, up at least tomorrow. How could what is the best index calls to buy? Assuming the dollars, you know, I don't know as far as what's the best index calls to buy. Um, I just sell premium. That's my. I'm not buying any puts. I'm not buying any calls. I'm just selling. I'm selling puts and selling covered calls and taking advantage of the premium. Um, for example, I'm just going to show you guys. Um, actually, in MDB, we were just looking at it. In MDB, this underlying. If you go to the trade tab. Go 38 days out, and look at this. You could sell a one lot, a one one contract, 30 delta, at 135, and collect over $700 on a one lot for a $135 stock. It's just massive. So the, the premium is just huge. And even on the one I just showed you in Revolve, RVLV, this is a $15, $16 stock. And if you went 24 days out, Oh, and I think it's probably crushing after earnings. Never mind. We won't go to that one. Volatility is going to drop in RVLV, so that one might not be good to trade um, moving forward. But if we look at, um, shoot, Wayfair. Let's go 38 days out on Wayfair. You know, you can sell a one-handle 30-ish 30, delta and get, you know, $550. Or if you had some shares, you could sell a covered call and you could maybe come out and sell sell a 40 delta covered call for 525 530 it's just amazing how um, how, how how much premium is in the, in the markets right now let's see krish patel so you so are you down after revolve tanking today um, looking at revolve i'm not i mean i'm down in the puts i don't own any shares so um, i have Two contracts on that are naked puts, and so um, I'm down a tiny bit. My break even is pretty good, and so what I'll do is I'll continue to roll those for credits and move my cost basis down, and then try to get it to slip back above my um, entry point for an expiration at some point, or just get assigned the shares and then start selling covered calls on it. When I can get juicy, massive premium in a $18 stock, $19 stock, it doesn't take that many rolls or that much massaging to get this down to the point where you almost own it outright. Because if you have a $20 stock and you get $3 premium every time you're rolling it or messing with it, you know, if you roll that five times, if you if you put on five different trades with that over the course of months and months and months, that's fifteen dollars right there. So fifty, you know, you could be at four, you could be under five dollars a share on your cost basis, really, really quick. 
I hope that makes sense to everybody. That's kind of my, one of my biggest approaches is just trying to sell premium and get that cost basis down massively so that, uh, so that you can just not have to worry about what's happening on the surface of the ocean. I kind of look at it as like a big storm on an ocean. You know, if there's a scuba diver or even like a, a whale lurking a thousand feet below, the water's very calm where they are because there's such a buffer. They don't have to worry about the storm happening on top because it's really relevant to them. They're down low, they've got a big cushion, and they're just calmly hanging out. And that's kind of like the stock market. If you can get your cost basis down to 10 bucks, you don't care what's happening at 25, 24, 20, 17. It's irrelevant to you because you've got such a good cushion and you just keep selling profit. They're just little money-making machines that you're setting off, these covered calls. Um, let's see what's, let's see, can you give me your thoughts on AAN? This is for Blackhawk Driver. AAN, Aaron's Inc. Let's see. What are you looking to do in here, Blackhawk Driver? What's your, what are you dreaming about? Boy, that's quite a pullback. So Blackhawk, what I look for, first and foremost, is I will, uh, I'll look at this and say, okay, is the MACD pressing down? Yes, it is. Is the RSI below 40? Absolutely, way below 40. I'll look here and say, oh, they actually had an earnings beat and dropped. So revenue must have not been must not have been great, but they're profitable. They're making money. They're positive dollar fifteen, positive seventy three cents. They're kicking out a dividend. So then I would need to understand what this company does. And once I understand that, if I'm comfortable with what they do, and my opinion is that I think it's something that I want to get long and uh, have shares of, then what I would say to myself is, okay, let's go look at the volatility. I come to the trade tab, and implied volatility is forty nine percent. The current IV percentile is 60%. I like to trade things that are above 60, so this is good to me. I'm happy with uh, with that percentage. So then I would open up and say, um, I'd probably go to the 52-day just because it's closer to 45 days, and I'd look for premium. Now in here, you would kind of want to say to yourself, do I want to own this stock, or do I just want to collect a little bit of premium and stay away from it on a, on a short put? If you want to just have a short put and stay away from it, I probably wouldn't trade this one because 40 to 60 cents is, doesn't seem worth it to me. But if you wanted to own it and you're okay saying, I'm going to step in here at the 45, go one, one uh, step into the money and sell it for $4, you know, then all of a sudden your break even is 41, which is lower than it is now. So you go, go, you go 60 delta um, and sell it right at the money anticipating that you're going to get put the shares, you're going to end up with the shares, um, then that might be a good play. Me personally, um, I don't think I would trade this. I mean, I don't know what this company does. So, um, But if you like them and you want to own the stock, a great way to, to own the stock is to sell a put really close to the money, collect that big credit, and then it might rise and you might expire. You might not get it. So you don't have any risk on it, and some people like that. And then you could try again. And if you keep missing, you just keep making money until you do get hit and then you get the shares. So it's kind of a, a way of collecting some money before you get the shares. Um, but if you like it here and you do want to just jump in and buy it, then you could buy 100 shares and then come over here and start selling um, some out of the money, some covered calls like the 50 covered call for you know a buck or whatever it is. But, um, but yeah, I think it's... Uh, I think it's had a nice pullback. I don't know if this is like bad business related. I'd have to find out a little bit like why is it down? Do they just have an earnings miss? Uh, but they're still making money. If things seem positive and this just seems kind of dramatic, like you're, you're asking yourself, why did it drop so much? Then, then sometimes it's dramatic and it's a good point to get in. So um, I support you. Let's see. If wanting zero cost basis should look at energy stocks that are in the crapper. <laughs> XOM, CHK, yes. Later in the year will be a massive bull run as U.S. production fall off. But thank you, Joshua, for that. I'll take a look at those. Let's see. You know, Krish Patel, your, the answer to your question, um, I don't know when things will turn around, but one strategy for trying to time the bottom, you can't time it perfectly. Nobody can. If you do, that's complete luck. 
But just nibble. If you have a if you have a stock that you like, like say Aaron's right here, Krish Patel. Watch this real quick. Watch. So, so here's Aaron's. Let's say that you love this stock. You want to buy it, but you don't know where the bottom is. So what do you do? Tomorrow morning or right now, you go into Aaron's and you buy 10 shares and then you wait. And a day or two goes by and maybe it drops again and you buy 10 more shares and it drops and you buy 10 and it drops and you buy 10 and then it goes up and you go, oh, I'm going to wait a minute and see. And it goes up a little bit, up a little bit and then it drops a little bit and you buy 10 and it goes up and it goes up and it drops and you buy 10. And then when you get to 100, you have a nice, you kind of legged your way into the trade. You have a nice average price per share and then you start selling covered calls on it. You don't have to go all in at once and time the bottom. Just nibble as it drops. And if you ultimately want to end up with 100 shares, then just buy 5 or 10 at a time. There are no commissions. You could buy one share every day for the next 100 days and then you'd have your 100 shares and you pay no commissions. So there's really no no reason to avoid buying in small share quantity because you're not restricted. There's no overhead cost to it. Let's see, Christian, um, what's the importance of the volatility from the options tab? Still new to this. Um, from the options tab, the volatility is huge. That's the whole, that's the whole game. That's what it's all about. You gotta watch your IV percentile. This number right here, it's pretty awesome if that's above 50. If it is, it means options prices are inflated. Like watch this, like take note of this, you know, at 100, go to like 38 days on AMD and notice that the 48 right at the money is 395. If you took a screenshot of this right now and then come back when AMD is at 50%, and open up the same 38 days out and look at it again and you'll see all the prices. All these will go down. Volatility drives the premium prices. And as premium sellers, we want them higher so that we can collect more and make it more worth our time. The, I guess you could say the pot odds are in our favor. Hope that answers that question. Yeah, Joshua, A, and yeah, if you like it and you understand what that company does and you're in, then, then that's awesome. I want to look at the E-mini S&Ps again just to see. I recommend looking at the E-mini S&Ps forward slash ES just because you can kind of see what's happening all the time. They only close for like an hour in the evening, so right now we can tell that they are having a tiny little green day moving forward. We had our big down day today. And then they closed for an hour or so, and then now they're open again. And so we're starting to turn green and move around. And you might get an idea for tomorrow. You know, maybe late tonight you're watching this and you've seen that, that the E-mini S&Ps have come way back. You might be able to prepare your trades differently for tomorrow. If it's down, you know we're going to go lower in the morning. So you, you, this is a good thing to just keep an eye on uh, the E-mini S&Ps futures. Let's see, Blackhawk Driver, you look at a, about a 30 to 45 delta if you don't want to be assigned and 60-ish if you want to be assigned. So Blackhawk, if you go to, um, let me go to one, let me go to Roku. This is one that I trade a lot. Um, in Roku, if we go to the trade tab here, let's open up 38 days. If I don't want to be assigned, if I absolutely, Blackhawk, want to stay away and not be assigned a stock on a covered call, I'll typically go further out. Like if I'm very worried and I absolutely under no circumstances don't want to be assigned, I will go, I'll stay above 30 delta, but, but more likely above 20 delta. I would stay out here, 20 and above. But I'm pretty loose with it because if, if I get called, those chances are I'm going to be making money either way. So I'm a little more aggressive with my covered calls than I am my naked puts. Um, the covered calls, if I want to keep my stock, I stay a little ways away, but I do know that if I'm a little more aggressive and my strike gets crossed at 21 days until expiration, I can always roll that trade up a little bit. I can roll it out and up and collect a small credit. So I can kind of massage the trade later. I'm always okay with doing that. So I'm usually a little more aggressive with the covered calls knowing or expecting that I'm going to have to 
sort of manage the trade a little bit more. But if you're terrified of losing your shares, I would stay way out. You know, I'd go 20 delta or further, or even 15 delta, one full standard deviation and out. Yes, Black Doc. Yes, no, I got it. I got it. I understand that was a question. Yeah, this is amazing. We've got, this is great. Um, so that's how I typically look at those. And like I said, if you want to keep an eye on things tonight, take a look at the E-mini S&Ps and check that out. Um, it's just a good way of, of keeping an eye on things after hours when, when things are getting quiet. Anybody have any other questions? Any other tickets, tickers you want to check out? Um, Apple was sort of the big diver today. That was a, quite a move down. So, um, you know, <laughs> if you want to sell some Apple puts, you can always get in it. Get in it soon. You know, I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow, but um, it's been kind of interesting. So typically, 38 to 45 day expirations allow more flexibility. Um, so Blackhawk, the 38, 35 to 45 days, what that does is it gives you the best, I'll try to explain this the best I can, the time decay, which is the premium, the decay in time so that you can, so as time decays, your premium decays, and you want to buy things back cheaper than you sold them. So the perfect curve is set up at 45 days. That's where you, you get right into the decay. If you go 80 days, you're going to go flat, 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 and then when you get to 45 days, it's going to start to curve and decay, which is what you want. Now, when you get down to 21 days, it doesn't just go straight down. It'll go down, and then there's an inflection point where it'll the last 21 days will kind of flatten out. So you have more risk, but you're not gaining as much premium per day. You're not getting as much decay per day after that inflection point after 21 days. So I like to put on trades at 45 days, and then at 21 days, I either take them off or roll them. That's kind of the standards. I like to stick to that, and tasty trade dot com that's what they're all about and they do a bunch of research research on those topic on that topic and they back it with math and if you have any questions go to tasty trade and take a look at that and they'll and just google search tasty trade 45 day expirations and you'll get tons of videos about it so check that out um, all right everybody well if there are any other questions it was great to see everybody uh krish blackhawk driver akash christian joshua who else is in here satish Yenev Brook, um, who else is in here I can say hello to? Net Compound, glad you're here. Let's see, yeah, that's everybody. Awesome, we got a great turnout today. Thank you guys so, so much. We'll see what the markets do tomorrow. Um, I'll be tuning back in tomorrow, so um, turn on your bell notifications so that when I do go live, you'll get it because I never know. It'll be sometime uh, late in the market day, it may even be after the close, but uh, turn those those notifications on that way you don't miss anything. I um, hope everybody managed their trades well today. No panicking. Sit tight. We're going to do okay. Sell premium. Reduce your cost basis, and we'll be okay. And then we'll celebrate at some point as we move back higher. Akash Chapka. Thank you, Jimmy. Great video. Thank you so much, Akash. We'll see you tomorrow. Everybody take care. Have a great night, and uh, tune in tomorrow. Have a great one.